a wash against Watt and Highsmith. It's which, still, uh, you know, uh, what are you doing with Cam? It's and, either a, it's either a quarterback who is who is injured, yeah, or it's a quarterback who is very inexperienced or subpar or yeah. subpar, yeah. and you got that pass rush in that building, right? With Renegade playing and the terrible towels swirling and the you know, opening day crowd, it's a big ask. And Quentin Johnson's been important to them by default. I don't know if he does anything if Porter locks him down, you yeah. know. So penalties could obviously be a problem. Turnovers. Well, turnovers, yeah. 100%. I mean, I don't know that maybe Fields turns into a pumpkin and takes a bunch of sacks and turns the ball over a bunch, and the Steelers have taken a lot of penalties. That keeps up, and they lose. And they can't stop the run, and Dobbins is running free left and right. That could happen. I don't feel super certain about it, but the more Herbert news comes out, the better I like Steelers will be three and out. Does it bother you if Troy Fatanu can't go in this game? Yes. Absolutely. Because their edge guys are really good. And it'll be a test for him either way. Yeah. But I thought he played really well in, in week one. See, I, I think with, with Broderick Jones, um, he might be just a little bit tipped off at how he played last hope. week. I would hope. And, right. and a little embarrassed. Out, yeah, yeah, a little embarrassed. Yeah, and, yeah. and comes out and says, hey, that's not me. I think he comes out and has a good game. Because he's, he's got the talent. Yes. You know, if that got him refocused a little bit, going out and putting up, if, if, if giving up the sacks in the preseason didn't get him refocused, mm-hmm. maybe getting benched, and then when you got the opportunity to go in there and play, yeah. and playing like that, might just have done that. I mean, um, who knows? I mean, the, the glass half full of this whole situation is... It might be exactly what Jones needs. Yeah. You know, and he, he shuts down Bosa and Mac, and you're like, that's why. I just don't know how much the Steelers off. are going to have to throw. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, are Bosa and Mac going to be that big of a factor if you're only throwing the ball 20 times? Mm-hmm. And I think if, if, if it is a compromised Justin Herbert or Easton Stick or, you know, if they decide to go with, with uh, Taylor Heineke, Steelers can play the same way that they have been playing. Yeah. And, and the Chargers want to play that way anyways. Yeah. I, mean, again, I just think the Steelers are better at it. They've been doing it longer. They did it against better teams. Yeah. And I think they have fewer holes on the roster. They know how they want to play, and they've been playing that way for more than a year. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they absolutely. will run the football. They've got, you know, just a better. And if you go from a pretty major quarterback disadvantage to a quarterback advantage, yeah. you know, like that's one thing I wasn't counting on, you yeah. know, for this. Um, we had thrown out earlier in the week about six offensive line sets. Does that get scrapped if Fotonic can't um, play? I think you can still do some of that if you really, really. I mean, you, you obviously, if you, you, you know, with this injury happening on a Friday, mm-hmm. if you were going to do that stuff, if that was in their game plan, um, maybe you just use a different offensive lineman to do it with. Because you're, yeah. you're not, you're not going to have all your tight ends that you typically have. You don't have Michael Pruitt for this game. Mm-hmm. He's been one of your better blockers out there. You've used him a lot in, that tw- in those 12 packages. So would that be McCormick? So your next best player? He's probably your next best guy up. Um, you probably, you're probably not going to put him out on the end, I wouldn't think. No, maybe you make him the tackle and everyone just bumps one. You and know you what bump, I mean? You know, if it's Broderick Jones, you bump him out and let him be out on yeah. the edge. Yeah, you don't want him edge protecting against Bosa and no, Mac, no. you know, with your outside hand and that kind of stuff. But again, if you force those guys out wider... Mm-hmm. You know, if he's got Washington outside of him, yeah. he's still not on the he's, he's still not the end end. I mean, this is a different version of thirteen personnel yeah. or whatever. You're yeah. with a bigger body because you know I, what you I both teams it with Jones yeah. as a six guy, of course. Yeah, you know, I always want to be a six six tackle type. You know, but he's a good run blocker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I don't, I wouldn't have a problem with it. It's not like you're going to throw out of that package. I'm sure both coaches are saying or preaching all week. The most physical team is going to win this without game. without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, there's that's just how doubt. those coaches are wired. Right? I think I think Landon Roberts has a big game. I could see that too. I, I think, think he's very it. impactful in this. Yeah, week. and if they have backup quarterbacks, Ooh. I could see some turnovers too. Yeah, you know, without question. We'll see. Uh, I think it's going to be a good game. The Herbert situation is looming huge right now. Huge. Yeah. I mean, it's massive. In fact, I, I was with you 16-13. If he doesn't play, I might go Steelers 20-10. to 10. I was leaning something like that, too, because I could see a better defensive or better field position, an extra turnover, yeah. something like that. Again, I, I still think Harbaugh does something wacky, but maybe he does two things wacky and it ends doesn't up being backwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the terrible towels are waving and they're teeing off on Easton Stick with four minutes left. You One know thing I mean? to keep an eye on, Matt, in this game, yeah, 
The Chargers have had four kick returns against them this year. Yeah, and you even, mentioned that. Even last week against Carolina. Now, Carolina didn't run them back, mm-hmm. but Dicker, the kicker, mm-hmm. um, a couple of his kicks only made it a couple of yards into the end zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he does, if he kicks one of those to Cordero Patterson, he's going to try it. He's going to bring it out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I hope he gets two or three return attempts. It would be great. Yeah. I mean, even if he gets one, yeah. um, that guy can change a game in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And that's why teams aren't kicking to him right now. And special teams favors the Steelers. Yeah. I mean, across the, across the board. And which kicker do you trust more to bang that 50 yarder to win it? You know? And ain't Dicker the kicker. And ain't Dicker the kicker. <laughs> Not against Boz. <laughs> so. Three and zero would be really something. It would be something, and then you'd be heading to uh, Indianapolis to play a scuffling uh, football team. I, I don't like where they're at right now, the no. Colts. But we'll dig into them. Got to get this one first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's they not going to be easy. One, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Harbaugh type coach team. It's going to be a bare knuckle fight. Yeah, hundred percent. So it'll be fun. I will enjoy watching it. Yeah. And uh, well, we'll be we'll talking be about on it Monday. on Monday. Of course, you can hear Matt and I both on the. I'll be on the pre pre game show. The full yeah, two hours. You get the right. you get the week off this week, but you can also hear Matt and I. On the regular pregame show, we do back-to-back hits with uh, with Mike Persuda and Jerry Dolak and and Bob Lavriola. Missy's on there and all yeah, she's everybody on right before me. Yeah, so uh, you get to hear us on there uh, previewing this game as well. Uh, but that's going to do it for our show today and for the week. So for my par- partner Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here on site, keeping us on the air for Tyler who keeps us uh, Doing bang looking good on, on the video here. Tyler Vittmeyer, I am Dale Lolly. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Join host Rob King and black and gold legends Ernie Mills and Darren Perry in St. Pete Clearwater, Florida for a bye week at the beach getaway. The weekend includes black and gold thin get-togethers on the beach, autograph sessions, giveaways, and more. For more information on booking your package at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach, visit byweekatthebeach.com. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort. Visit byweekatthebeach.com. At Northwest Bank, we're here for what's next. The next one to go off to college someday, thanks to smart college savings plans. The next place to fill with love and laughter, with more mortgage options for first-time buyers. Even the next thing you can't go without, like savings accounts with even more competitive rates. So whatever's next for you, we'll help you get there. Northwest Bank, for what's next. Visit northwest.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 317. Score big this season at Don's Appliances. From game day feasts to post game cleanup, we've got you covered. Don's has the region's largest selection of in stock appliances from brands like Whirlpool and Maytag. Because when it comes to kitchen and laundry appliances, we know how to play to win. Plus, the big box stores can't beat our free next day delivery and guaranteed lowest prices. Visit Don'sAppliances.com, where black and gold fans shop for appliances. Welcome to the Steelers Preview Show on WDVE Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your neighborhood Ford store. The F-150 is the official truck of the Pittsburgh Steelers. By Brian Patton and Associates, it's all about the benefits. And by the Steelers Pro Shop. Get it direct from the team at shop.steelers.com. And now here are your hosts, Merrill Hodge, Matt Williamson, and Mike Prezuda. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship 102.5. DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. I'm Mike Persuda, joined as always on these Thursday night parties by Matt Williamson yeah. of uh, the Steelers Audio Network and mm-hmm. Steelers.com. Uh, our buddy Merrill Hodge, our factor back, will be joining us for segment number two as we get you ready for the home opener, the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrisure Stadium. And Matt, uh, the news that uh, everybody was probably waiting for uh, came out a while ago. Uh, Russell Wilson limited in practice again today for the Steelers. Uh, all arrows pointing to Justin Fields getting another start. Yeah, and I don't think this should come as a huge shock. They definitely are not rushing him back. I get the impression next week has a pretty strong chance to uh, get Wilson back in the lineup. And if it were me, I would immediately insert him when he was ready. But we'll get another game of Fields and... Yeah, we'll see. I think Fields has played well. I mean, I don't think he's swept anyone off their feet, though. 
Uh, nor do I, but uh, he's not turned the ball over, it's and uh, he has walked off the field a winner both times, which is the That's object here, right, right. of the exercise. He certainly <laughs> sounded uh, today uh, like a guy who is expecting to start on Sunday. Justin Fields asked after practice today if uh, he came to Pittsburgh to kind of reboot or restart his career, and if he did, how that's been going so far. I think it's definitely a blessing being here. Um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet when I first you know, got here, but, you know, I was happy to come to an organization like this, and, you know, I couldn't even be more happier now. So I'm um, just glad I get the opportunity to uh, go out there Sunday and leave my teammates uh, onto the field and uh, hope to come out with a good with the win. Glad I get the opportunity to go out there Sunday and lead my teammates. This will be the third such opportunity, and uh, it's got a lot of people wondering if uh, – this might get to the point where Fields gets <laughs> mm-hmm. a whole bunch of opportunities. Russ, is there any concern that the longer you're inactive, the depth chart could change? No, I'm just focused on, on me every day. I just focus on me being fully healthy. You know, I have full confidence in our football team, and that's really what, what really matters to me. Russell Wilson, uh, not uh, worried that he could lose this no. through inactivity. You said a moment ago, Matt, you would play him when he's healthy. I would. I would play him when he's healthy. But yeah. At what point is there a point where they get to four and zero, five and zero, and you start right. thinking, you know what? It's a good problem to have. It's working the way it's working. It's working the way it's working. I mean, when I was saying that just a minute ago, I was saying in the back of my mind, well, what would Fields have to do Sunday to change that opinion? You know, if Wilson's ready to roll during practice post Chargers, what would Fields have to do to say, well, maybe we'll go back to you and probably something that not that he's incapable of but is out of the stratosphere would be my answer to that I mean really dominate on the ground not turn the ball over again which he's been phenomenal at his accuracy percentage is way up than his Bears days I mean so he's he's become somewhat of a different player but it's only been two game stretch too and it's only been one touchdown in two games. Yeah, and for, there's that right. for the offense. And, You're right. You know, penalties. Hey, they're penalties. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they're critical to the result of the play. Oh, <laughs> that, that would have been a touchdown if there wasn't holding. It also might have been a sack. It might have been a sack, holding. fumble, return for a touchdown. You right. Know, You're referencing right. Yeah. Specifically, the 51 yard uh, touchdown mm-hmm. to George Pickens, which was. A gorgeous throw. Oh, that was a heck of a play. Like, it's a shame that didn't count. It it was. No doubt. But if there's not holding there, I think he's getting tackled. Potentially, or he doesn't get the ball off, or he scrambles, or whatever. Or, you know, the the other Pickens one. Well, if he doesn't pick two players, he probably isn't wide open in the end zone, too. Might have been at least one guy in coverage. (laughs) Right. Uh, Rest of the uh, practice participation report for today. Roman Wilson uh, gets upgraded from limited to full. Uh, that also occurred last week, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't get in the lineup yet. Do you have uh, any hope that he sees the lineup? I, he said he he wants to play. You know, it's not, get his, it. not his call. Uh, I'm starting to wonder on him. Uh, the other know, receivers aren't exactly lighting it up. No, uh, but how much time can a rookie miss? And again, this, I know. this goes all the way back to the first padded practice of training camp. Right. And I mean, then, you know, he's been working his way back the last couple of weeks. But As you know, coaches are about trust and how do yeah. you trust. You know, that's going to be a hard thing to gain. That's a tough one there. And uh, Isaac Samalo did not practice for the second consecutive day, so uh, it doesn't uh, appear as if he's going to be getting a helmet on Sunday. You never know because he's a veteran. but That sounds uh, highly unlikely. M- but, but maybe next week. I mean, that's not out of the question from what I understand. Yeah, For the Chargers. Much different story for them. Uh, quarterback Justin Herbert, ankle, didn't practice yesterday, limited today. Sounds like he's trending toward playing, but I wonder, yeah. will he be affected? Right. And Dale and I had a really good conversation in the drive about this because, don't forget, he had plantar fasciitis. I don't know if it's the same foot or not. I have no idea. But that's something I bet he still feels as well. Kept him out of camp about three weeks. Yeah, and there was a lot of talk. Is he going to be ready for week one? He hasn't looked great despite being 2-0. and He's missed some throws, and I wonder if his lower body is bugging him. Safety, uh, Aloy Gilman, one of their starters uh, mm-hmm. on the back end, limited for a second consecutive day. And uh, edge rusher Joey Bosa, hip, limited for a second consecutive day. Gilman didn't play last Sunday against uh, Carolina. Uh, Bosa did. Uh, mm-hmm. Bosa probably, you know, working through what he's got to work through. Gilman's a quality player, though. I mean, he's and a... Legit starting safety. You that, know. that would be a loss. Yeah. Uh, the, the remarkable thing about this game, Matt, is that 
Uh, Jim Harbaugh has uh, arrived in Los Angeles and, and taken over. And to me, uh, the Chargers look like uh, what you might expect if the Baltimore Ravens and the University of Michigan <laughs> yeah. had a kid. Yeah, and, I, I mean, with, with Herbert as a quarterback. Right? There's a lot of ex-Ravens coaches. There's a lot of ex-Ravens players. Yes. Um, they are running the ball way more than they are throwing it. They mm-hmm. are running it with great frequency and success as well as frequency. Yes. I mean, they got three number one picks on that offensive line. They have a 300-pound defensive <laughs> lineman who's playing fullback. <laughs> the fullback is crazy, right. They play two tight ends as much as the Steelers do. Mm-hmm. And J.K. Dobbins, 266 rushing yards. Here's all you need to know about J.K. Dobbins. Uh, he averaged 7.7 yards a carry against the Panthers, and his average went down. Went down. To 9.9 <laughs> 9, for the 9. season. I mean, he looks like the guy he was coming out of Ohio State. Which was my favorite back in that class. And... It, I, I'm I'm happy for him you know, because he was a really good player that injuries were just the only negative on the guy. I don't know if you know this, but anyone with 500 carries in the history of the game, he now has the best yards per carry average. I you did know, not know that. Yeah, uh, just just these two games have put him over that. I mean, playing for the Ravens helps because Lamar, you know, Gus Edwards had a nice yards per carry average, average too. And he's kind of just a guy, but he's another former Raven we're going to see a lot of. They feel like the Ravens a lot. So I, they have Justin Herbert, but I mean, I, yeah. he hasn't thrown for 150 yards yet. No. His stat lines look like uh, Justin Fields or Kenny Pickett's did last year. Yes. Now, and this is a guy who would average 275 passing yards and change yeah. in his first four seasons. Yeah. I, I mean, like, even his attempts are down from half, almost 50% almost from what he's used to his whole career up till now. Now, I think. What we have to acknowledge for the Saints and for the Chargers is they got to play the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers are not an NFL team right now. They and looked really bad. I mean, like really bad. Like hard to imagine that's they, they made an NFL Denver team. look competitive. Exactly. Exactly. So that being said, I'm sure the Chargers could have dropped more points on them at the end too, but that was not a challenge playing that, that team. We've got uh, a lot more to get to uh, here on Steelers Preview. We're just getting warmed up, so you're going to want to keep it here. Steelers Preview is brought to you in part by the Steelers Pro Shop. Gear up with the latest game day necessities at the official Steelers Pro Shops. Get the latest sideline apparel, jerseys, terrible towels, authentic memorabilia, and custom exclusives you can only find directly from the team. Visit one of the official Steelers Pro Shops located at Acrisure Stadium, the Grove City Premium Outlets, and the Tanger outlets, you can also gear up online at shop.steelers.com. When we come back, it's time to get the ball to the factor back. Merrill Hodge will be joining us as we continue getting ready for the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrisure Stadium. You're listening to Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Your home for the Steelers. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. Join former gridiron great Mike Logan for a black and gold wine and watch party on Sunday, September 29th at Black Dog Wine Company. This intimate event provides the chance to watch the game with a former player, ask questions, and gain knowledge on and off the field. Tickets to the event are free and include an appetizer spread, two glasses of wine, and a bottle to take home. Space is extremely limited. Register today at showclicks.com. Keyword, wine and watch. The wine and watch party at Black Dog Wine Company is brought to you by United States Steel, along with SNT Bank. I'm Jamie Bordas. At Bordas & Bordas, we're a proud partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? We understand and share many of the same Pittsburgh values. Toughness. Hard work. Dedication. At the end of the day, the people who count on us care about one thing. Results. That drives us. And it's why we win. Bordas & Bordas. Fighting for justice. 
Did you know one in eight people, including one in six children, under the age of 18 in southwestern Pennsylvania are food insecure? Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank leverages the power of community to achieve lasting solutions to hunger and its root causes. Working with more than 1,000 partners in its 11-county, Three Rivers region, the food bank is here to ensure everyone in every community has access to the food and resources they need to thrive. If you're in need of food assistance, would like to volunteer or donate, visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. That's pittsburghfoodbank.org. Unplug and reconnect with a long fall weekend in the Laurel Highlands, a preferred vacation destination partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Embrace sweater weather and enjoy the stunning architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, a scenic mountain drive, or a challenging bike trail. Think falling leaves, pumpkin festivals, s'mores by the campfire, and stops along an exciting craft beverage trail. Make lasting family memories with a three- or four-night stay in a cozy cabin. Start planning now at GoLaurelHighlands.com. For an extraordinary advantage in sports, you need a game plan. For an extraordinary advantage everywhere else, all you need is AcroSure. With a high-tech human approach to insurance, cybersecurity, and more, AcroSure helps you take care of what you care about. That makes winning easy. See what AcroSure's extraordinary advantage can do for you at AcroSure.com. Back to the Steelers preview show on DVE. Welcome back. Mike Pursuta and Matt Williamson getting you ready for the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrosure Stadium right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Time now to welcome in our factor back, Merrill Hodge, joining us as he always does. And Merrill, uh, I know we got a lot to talk about as it relates to the Steelers and the Chargers, but I got to start with uh, my tape review of the Chargers and the Carolina Panthers. Oh, man. Five plays into the game, there was a flag thrown for illegal hands to the face. Oh, I know where you're going now. And it was thrown on (laughs) the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Jadavion Clowney. I saw that, and I immediately thought of you, Merrill. Man, I love it. They actually later in the game, did you see they just start dropping him into coverage? I'm like, that's how. I'm like, that team's a mess already this week too. Have you seen a team that Magic bad Gordon, in man. recent memory? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's really if I, if I rack my brain, not competitive. Rack my brain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's um, and they had, <laughs> they only had a year to. Well, that well, listen, we. We can do a whole show on that on that team, on that <laughs> and what they've done and the decisions they've made. But that that's going to haunt them for for years. All right. So before we let that go, should I be wary of Carolina now this week because you you always worry about a professional who's been embarrassed, or are there some professionals who are just destined to continue being embarrassed? Yeah. Well, based on well, you know, I'll tell you this: the one bright spot they you know benching Bryce Young is a good move. I think it makes some. That gives them some hope offensively. Yeah. You know, they can do some things. They're not going to be as limited. And what's unfortunate for Bryce Young, and he, he didn't bring this on himself. I mean, anybody would want to be the first-round overall pick in the National Football League, but his just limited skill set is just – it just it doesn't transition to the National Football League. It just doesn't. And no matter how hard he works or what he does, he's going to be 5'9". He's not going to change from 5'9". And that – is always going to be an arduous challenge, no matter who coaches him, in how that you can function offensively, consistent enough to to win, to win and win consistently, let alone a championship. Does watching that game make it difficult to really get a good bead on the Chargers? A little bit, yeah. You know, a little bit, yeah. You know, I, you know, I've watched the first two games, and you know, and the Raiders weren't, you know, the juggernaut. You know they played so much better against Baltimore, so they, you know they didn't. They haven't played two great offenses. And I'm not saying the Steelers are a great offense right now either. You know they they are, I think, a little better than the two that we just talked about. Other than the Raiders, I think they get better. They got better quarterback play there, you know, than the other two. I mean, of the two, they got the best quarterback play, and you know he does. He knows how to play the game. You know, he's not elite, but he, he knows how to play. And he knows how to play that position. So between the, both, the both of them, though, I think I got a good feel for what it comes down to. I think they're, they're box players. Listen, they're edge players. You know, we talked about this on the morning show. I, I think this game could be like a 
an edge game. I mean, if you want to watch yep. who's the best edge players, you can you, you get them all in one arena. I mean, if combination, I can't think of two better. I mean, a combination of four better, quite honestly. I guess there's four of them. That uh, you don't see that often, you know, where those dynamic things enter, enter a game. But their edge rushers are incredible. Steelers are incredible. So um, the Chargers do have a better – better tackles than than did Seattle. They they got a better chance of, you know, dealing with them and, you know, keeping them at bay than the first two opponents. Well let's talk about that. Uh I, I agree with you. I think that's a highly compelling matchup. I'll I'll be at the game Sunday. I may have my binoculars trained on the uh two offensive edges no matter who has the ball and, and just watch it that way. But uh is there a favorable matchup, T J Watt against anybody Bosa against uh, Troy Fautano making his second career start. Khalil Mack against anybody. How do you, who's got the edge edge? <laughs> well, listen, um, either one of those guys, you know, can give a rookie a problem. Fautano, I will say this, though. You know, I, I, he's fundamentally so much better than Jones. Just, so, you yeah. know, from feet, hips to hands, just so much better. Um, you know, he gets a little – now, listen, you know, I didn't realize he had not played right tackle. So that's a big ask for a kid who's never played right tackle and just make that transition in the NFL. I don't know if people can appreciate it because just because you played left doesn't mean you can play right. And just because you play right doesn't mean you can play left. You know, it's it's like linebacker. It's like but Khalil Mack is the most incredible player I've ever evaluated coming out of college. He could play inside, outside, and defensive end, and he looked like all-world at all three, which was just, like, incredible. But he'll open his hips up a little bit at times. And he'll and give the corner a little bit. And with these guys, you can't give them anything. I mean, you got to be your most buttoned up against these two because they're so good. Um, they have so many different ways to attack you. Um, so, but I, you know, I'm sure that from a scheme wise, Arthur Smith is not an idiot. He knows what he's doing. I mean, that's one thing. If, if you watch us, he knows how to protect quarterback. He knows how to maximize the guys he's got. You know, I don't, I don't see them putting Justin Fields in a position where he's going to be vulnerable very much. Now, there's going to be times you got to ask guys to block. I'm not saying that, but you can do some stuff scheme wise and play calling wise that can hold those guys at bay a little bit. But there's going to be those times where you got to block, and you're going to have to make that happen. So, obviously, with these edge players, they are really, really good, and I'm really impressed with the Chargers' tackles. But staying out of third and long yeah. is going to be pivotal for both these teams. Which team is more better equipped to stay out of third and long? Well, I think the Chargers are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I just I kind of watched them, you know, their running game. They, you know, they built on the running game. You know, they, their first week, they were just inside zone, inside zone. You know, then they, they brought some. Um, some wham stuff, and that might have been specifically for what the Panthers had. You know, I, I don't know it, that, that one's hard to tell, you know. But they added a little to their running game, they, but they're very versatile, you know. They they do seem to want to attack you inside zone wise, seems to be their their strength and what they like right now. It's more only week two. Um, and their passing game, you know, week one, it was a really quick, okay, if I was. I almost thought they're, they're treating their quarterback like he was a rookie, the way that they had dialed stuff up. Now that evolved, then they then they opened it up a little more against the Panthers, and they started doing half field reads and little some more explosive stuff, a little more run action stuff, and, and taking shots down the field. Um, with the Steelers, I think they will be um, somewhere closer to the Raiders, just because. Um, of their edge rushers, you know, you 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 don't want that quarterback in that in that pocket too long. You know, the ball's got to come out, and you know when they do like they were, the run action stuff when they take their shots, I think that's what you'll see because you can get max protection and you can give uh, either or. So you, can, you can double both guys and just get a two receiver route, which the which I that's what I would anticipate when they take shots. They'll do. Let's talk about the uh, the Chargers tackle specifically. Uh, Joe Alt, the rookie right tackle. Uh, they call him uh, Control Alt, the lead out there. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, handle Max Crosby. Can he handle T.J. Watt? Hey, where was that kid from? Notre Dame. Okay, 
Um, his dad was, was a big, real good player in the league for 10 years. John, or to, John yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was, there's actually so many good tackles. That's why I asked. I was like, I get, I get these these guys lost. Because um, the kid in Oregon State, which I, who was right tackle, that's why I was, I was thinking him, mm-hmm. actually. Um, who was, that dude was a beast. Anyway. Yeah. Old had um, to switch sides, too. He was a left at Notre Dame. They're playing him at right. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, well, he was a left, yeah, at Notre Dame. So I was like, well, that's, that's somewhat interesting. But anyway. Um, listen, T.J. Watt is a, a special football player. I know you were talking about not being, you know, um, not letting him hit the quarterback and sack quarterback, but um, you, you, he's going to play every down. I mean, I love what T.J. Watt does when he doesn't get a sack, quite honestly. The plays he makes when he doesn't make the tackle, the things that he does that helps, that's just good sound football. Um, that's what I love about him. That he's going to set the edge. He's going to make tackles. He's going to blow things up. He's going to constantly penetrate. He's going to. He's just a constant. He's a disruptor on every play, and that will be. Even I don't care how good a rookie is. That that's a lot to ask. You know. Um, you know. That's why Fatano. You know. He's he's got his hands full. You know. But both guys. You know. From a skill set in college to the NFL was pretty unique and special. And you can see how they've played now. There's not a lot of – you can't tell how, how young they are unless you really study them hard and you just see little things that they will get clearly better on. Um, it will be interesting, though, which guy breaks down fundamentally because I think that's probably where it comes down to is when those moments you have to block a guy, you don't have help, you don't have a chip. And you just don't break down fundamentally against those pass rushers. Because if you do, they're going to get you. Well, I think people might be surprised the way the Chargers are playing. They have Herbert, who is a perceived franchise caliber quarterback. Uh, Averaged close to 300 yards a game his first couple years, 275 and change his first four seasons this year. uh, Under 150 both games. But this team has been built by Harbaugh to play Harbaugh football, has it not? I mean, all these tight ends and uh, the line and, and the great running backs, um, they're, they're, doing, yeah, well, you know, they're doing what they should with what they have, correct? Because much like the Steelers, there's not an overabundance of great wide receivers on this team. No. Um, true story. You know, and I, you, you can I, – uh, is it Roman? I, I forget their offensive coordinator, but, you know, their offensive It is Roman, yeah. Yeah, okay. heavy Ravens so, influence to say the least. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just so people know, I mean, they got their offensive coordinator from the Ravens, and so, and I've, I've talked to him many times, and he, I, he is just, you talk about a, a guy who knows the running game in depth that is just like I was just sitting there in awe going, wow, and we just, and then we start talking about Chuck Noll in the trap game, and you know, could you bring that back? And we start going, we started going off the off the charts where you'd be like. Most people probably bored, but I was like, you know, the guy's fascinating. You know, um, that's why their running game is wicked. They're committed to it. You can tell they're committed to it. They decided that a long time ago when that staff came together. That's why, you know, I'm sure that they're going to have something for the Steelers. And the things that we I just mentioned I saw, I clearly expect. You know what I did not see, which I was actually surprised? Now that we're all in there. He was foundationally a power O guy. You know, the now, power row is like the, one of the most physical runs that exists in football. Okay. And in fact, I went to Chicago when I was there. Like, we were committed to that. And when somebody's committed to that, I'm not, to me, that means they, they mean business. That means they're, they're going to run the football. They just putting this in just to put it in. It's putting it in because they're like, this is who we are. I didn't see much of that. You know, and I don't know why that is. You know, now that could be the thing you see this week. You know, um, I'm sure they have more that they're going to add to because they do a lot. You know, I like they run the strong side and the weak side too. You know, they're not they're not heavy on right or left. They're not heavy on strong or weak, um, especially after two weeks. I, they probably have very few tendencies that you can really put your finger on, which makes it harder against a team a team like that that's going to bring out more wrinkles in their running game. So you were talking off uh, running scheme there and. I think it's noteworthy that through two games we've seen very, very, maybe none, pulling linemen for the Steelers. And I thought that was a real weapon the second half of last year. It's not really an Arthur Smith thing. I mean, do we think that's a thing of the past? Do you have mixed feelings about that? Or 
you know, what do you think of the Steelers yeah, was, schematically? Actually, yeah, I actually was a little surprised at that too because they yeah. did it so well, and the guys are so. Listen, pinning and pulling. Um, I think some. I go back to the trapping system. I'm telling you, I, I've always felt that um, there was an advantage. I love the counter game. I think. I think. You know, I mentioned the power run is like that. Is a man, that is a, this we mean business. But I still think the counter is the most versatile run in football. Um, they give you inside, outside. I mean, physical. Um, it gives you everything. As from a runner, it's the one of the. I think, from my perspective, it was just. It was one of the one of my the things I liked the most to run because it gave there's so many options in it and the timing in it that it had to be. Uh, from a running perspective, had to go along with the blocking. I loved that aspect of it. Um, but I loved it just because of all the versatility in it. Um, but I don't know. I, I actually thought that they would. I thought they would look at, hey, we really did this. Let's keep those things. Now, that, listen, Arthur doesn't mean that he doesn't build on stuff, too, you know, and add stuff. Right, right. That happens all the time, you know, as you get going on in the year. And you need to add something. Or an opponent does something that, you, that they're struggling with, and you're like, well, let's add it this weekend. You do it so well, you just keep it. That does happen too, but I was too. I was surprised that they didn't do a little because of the athletes that they have and their offensive line. You know, as a whole, has played so good. I've been really impressed with them and how they play. You know, guard, the two rookies. I thought like they've been outstanding as a whole. They have played well together and done well in the running game. So they just gonna have to build on that because this will be their best test. We don't have a huge sample size, only a couple of games, but the Chargers are number one in scoring defense. The Steelers are number two in scoring defense. They're both allowing less than 10 points a game, which even in a small sample size is pretty impressive. Sure. If you're Arthur Smith of the Steelers, Merrill, or if you're Greg Roman of the Ravens and you're coordinating an offense against defenses of this caliber, does that change how you go about it? Or do you rally your room and say, you know what, guys, we are running the ball down their throats anyway because that's what we can do. Uh, the, the, oh. does the quality of the, how much does the quality of the defense affect what you try and how often on offense? Well, a lot. I mean, I'm telling you a lot. But I would just say this. Both of them have a formula to neutralize pass rushers. Pass, I mean, you know, the best – I remember when the Bears came in, they still had that 85 defense in those play. We knew this. We knew that. Um, we knew that you're going to have to, if you want, if you don't want these pass rushers, Richard Dent specifically. If we don't want Richard Dent to have a day and get going, um, then we're going to go run the ball at him like four or five straight times, which we did. And Richard Dent was so he was he started getting angry after three, and you could tell he just started losing his mind. He was like he didn't want to play that. Um, now I'm not saying all these guys don't want to play it, but that's the best way. You got to keep those guys at bay. Number one. Great way to do it. And then those run action plays I'm telling you about. And what makes that different than play action is when the offensive line it, when the offensive line attacks the line of scrimmage and they play on the other side for like a yard, that's run action. And when you do that, you paralyze the box and then you can take shots down the field. And I just think both teams will try to generate their shots that way versus the drop back method. So I look at this defense and they're playing really well. They haven't had real stiff, you know, st- stiff tests, especially Carolina, who's totally dysfunctional. But their big guys on defense for the Chargers, to me, are a real liability. Like, I'm not sure how many of their oh, yeah. true defensive linemen would even make this team. No. Um, are you talking about the Panthers? or the, No, I'm uh, talking about the, the Chargers' defensive tackles, nose tackles, big guys on the Charger D. I should have be been more specific. Oh, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, let me tell you, they, like, they're, they're box players, you know, I, as a whole, um, you know, first, you know, I'll just say that I, I like the Steelers rotation and their yeah. box players better than the, the Chargers. If we're talking about depth and rotation mm-hmm. and and versatility of everything, you know, if I had to take the box, I would take the Steelers box. Merrill, do you think there is a path to Justin Fields? Turning the tables on the death chart and, uh, you know, winning enough games and playing well enough to still be the starter when Russell Wilson is deemed healthy. Well, listen, I, I always thought it was hard to bench a winner. You know, um, he does – like here's where his growth has to happen. He misses some some, throw, some throws 
from an anticipation aspect, you know, like a deep curl. And instead of sitting on it and waiting for him to get the curl completed, you're too late. You know, ball needs to come out. You know, there's a couple of those on the field. Um, what is a little bit of concern in this one is they missed a hot. Now, he, he got him out of it with his legs, but they didn't see it. He didn't see it. And I'm just going to tell you from experience, um, the Chargers saw that. And don't think for one second the Chargers aren't going to dial that up and whatever else they can to see if they, they can handle it. You know, and that, that man, you have, you have to show growth in that too because you can't, you, you can't miss those. You, you got to punish people that do that. You know, now he got about the trouble with his legs, but you're not always going to win that one with your legs, you know. Um, so those are two thing areas that he, if he got better at, I would find it hard to bench you. You know, as long as he's better and you're winning, you know, it would be it would be a it would be a gutsy call. You know, you know, those coaches in those meeting rooms know more than we do, and I, that they get, that's the advantage they have. But I would find it hard to sitting down. So, Merrill, Justin Fields has been one of the most, if not the most, blitzed quarterback in the league since he's joined the NFL. And Denver came at him a very high percentage of the time, and he completed a a really high percentage of his pass versus blitz. I mean, is that something that everyone's going to do? Do you assume the Chargers will These blitz These guys will come on third down, right? I would imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like I told you, they missed some, too. I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Those, were, those, those, those are the ones that there are. They're, they're they're looking at so they they're not going to take it easy they're going i'm telling them they'll ratchet it up come on <laughs> be prepared for that mm -hmm. i you know that could be the difference too um listen good or bad you know they either get there and we don't clean it he doesn't clean it up or he cleans it up and he makes them pay for doing it merrill last thing i got for you tonight um what's broderick jones going through you know, yeah, you mentioned his technique. Three penalties, getting yanked mid-series, losing his job. Uh, he's a young guy, highly touted, highly drafted, and he's uh, struggling right now. Um, yeah, what's his path and, um, here? I, well, talent tells you what you can do. Motivation tells you what you will do. I think that kid needs a, a moment of self-reflection where he looks at himself and takes ownership if he wants to be really um, a contributor and a really good player. And keep in mind, he does have that potential. I saw him do a down block and literally smash the tackle and destroy the linebacker. And I'm like, where's that been? <laughs> so I've seen enough of it, to, even though it's been glimpses. He knows how to play and play right. He just, for whatever, chooses not to. He is sloppy fundamentally. I mean, he is I, – I can't tell you how many times his feet, hips, and hands and pad level is atrocious. Hands not existing. You can't play like that in the NFL just to be successful. You just, and he's, it's almost like he's freelancing. And, you know, and he has no purpose and he has no passion about being a pro. Um, you run with my of a kid, you know, and only you can do whatever, you, you know, you can bench a kid, you can do all these things until they take ownership and wake up. There's nothing you can do. I've seen his, zero you can do. I've seen his feet get too close together or even cross, and then oh, rarely marry up that. his hands. Yeah. It's funny you said that. I stopped the play, and I'm like, okay, how in the world is he? In the, well, I'm gonna, he, he, his legs are in scissors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> cross. His feet, That's a no-no, no, folks. Still, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. He, he, his, his arms are beside his hips, and he's straight up. I'm like, that is the most... That is one of the most, like, what I'm saying, awful? That's awful from every platform you can think of, feet, hips, hands. Because that's how... Like, you can't get much worse. Hands. Like, that's the hardest way I'm to not. block someone on the whole planet. <laughs> you have yeah, no he leverage did. And, he, and he didn't right. block. And he, right. and he got stuck right back into the quarterback's lap. And, you know, and... But then I've seen him do it right. Like, I'm telling you, then I've seen... You know, and what... Here's what bothered me. He came back and was... He seemed to be jawing at a Friar Muth, that they had a double. That Friar Muth, actually, who's a guy who's actually improved in his blocking, by the way, and he's credit. I mean, he is really playing, like being a complete tight end, by the way. But he, he the way the combo block worked, he blocked the right guy. Friar Muth blocked the right guy and did a good job. He misses the linebacker who makes the tackle. When he comes back and 
it was John of Fryer's, and I'm like, what the, What could he possibly be saying to him other than, um, why can you block better than me? Uh, that's the only thing I'd be saying. Like, <laughs> what is he doing? What? And I was like, why would he be yelling at Fryer's? What? He didn't do anything. Fryer's just kind of walked away, like, whatever. But I was like, the kid has, obviously, talent. I, but that just tells you what you can do. You know, he's got to, He's got to get. He's got to change his approach to things um, and take ownership. He does that, you know. The, the kid could, could be a massive contributor, you know, to that offensive line. But not playing like he is. He's he's killing. He's killing. That's why I think I credit him for for putting him down because he was killing that team in the short period he was there. Merrill, I tell you to enjoy the game Sunday, but I'm sensing about 80 combined rushing attempts. I think you got the popcorn already fired up. <laughs> your and, kind of uh, game. <laughs> you're you're going to be like DiCaprio, that meme, just pointing at the screen. Look, they ran again. They ran again. <laughs> there we go. Run the football, yeah, we'll baby. Game might be over in two hours, two and hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, Merrill, great stuff. We'll, uh, we'll do it again next week. Absolutely. Go Steelers. See you guys. Merrill Hodge, the factor back right here on Steelers Preview. Nobody in America is going to enjoy this game. Yeah, this is his kind More of game. This is a rock fight at the 50-yard line. Uh, yeah, right. Beautiful stuff coming up in the <laughs> uh, in the world of Hodge. Uh, we got one more segment to go here on the preview, so you're going to want to keep it here with Matt Williamson. I'm Mike Pursuta. This is Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. With nearly 900 physicians and 7,300 employees, we are the third largest health system in Western Pennsylvania. We've earned top honors for the quality of our care, including recognition from U.S. News and World Report and health grades. We're Independence Health System, comprising Butler, Clarion, Frick, Latrobe, and Westmoreland Hospitals. And we're changing the landscape of healthcare in our region by providing low-cost, high-quality care through superb clinical expertise and the latest technology. Independence Health System. Expert care here. Black and gold are the colors that not only honor our city, but our sports. Together, we're proud sponsors of Two-A-Days. Dedication. Comeback wins. Excitement, losing your voice, and passion. We are black and gold. We are Ford. The official truck of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's Greg Wolfley for my friends at Clearview Federal Credit Union. The Clearview team is here to help you score your financial goals and support our community. Clearview is always upping their game for those in need. Through Touchdowns for Hope, these pros will donate $500 to the Light of Life Rescue Mission for every black and gold touchdown scored this season. Now that's what makes a real winning team. Visit clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown to learn more and open an account today. That's clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown. A chance you'll see. You like slots, we've got lots. Blackjack roulette, take your shots. It's where you want to be. Bet Rivers Online Casino is your home for chance. With hundreds of slots, live table games, and more. Bet Rivers Online Casino. Check out the app. Take a chance. Must be 21 plus and physically present in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Void were prohibited. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Steelers fans, meet us at the Steelhouse. Mobile Hub on September 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Robinson Market District at Settlers Ridge for the next Steelhouse Saturday. Be one of the first 100 fans to spend $100 on your favorite Steelhouse products from Boyd and Blair, Hidden Still Spirits, and Noir Distillery, and take home a limited edition rocks glass while supplies last. Visit Steelers.com slash Steelhouse for more details and to catch our Steelhouse Saturday schedule now. Back to the Steelers Preview Show on DVE. Welcome back to the Preview. Mike Pursuit and Matt Williamson. And uh, I don't think Merrill's calmed down yet. No, I think he's really looking forward to this one. And this is right up his alley. And these two head coaches are going to be stubborn, tough. I think it's going to be a fun game. Uh, you know, I liken it. Uh, I think I've told you before. I try to go to the Army-Navy game every year. Okay. And one of the things, now this is not going to be triple option football. No, no. But it's going to be run the football, and it's going to be first downs are important, and field position is important. Fundamentals. And field goals are important, and they both have 
good field goal kickers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a good rock fight at the 50. Yeah. Or fist fight at the 50, however you want to. Uh, you know, sum that up. That's that's fun stuff. We like Steelers Ravens. Uh, right. Those are kind of the same. And hey, the Chargers. Well, there's a lot of Ravens DNA, like you mentioned to start the show. Chargers are trying to be the Raven, uh, the Baltimore Wolverines, or the uh, yeah, you, you know, the 300 pound fullback. I gotta love that. The yeah. University of Michigan Baltimore <laughs> campus. Uh, I don't know, but it's. I think it's going to be fun. I mean, uh, he had a first round rookie, and they only threw the ball what 12, 13 times sometimes at Michigan. Oh, the Penn State right. game last year. Right, right. They threw. They attempted two passes in the second half <laughs> right. and won because they were just running the ball. Yeah, he'll and be why, very content to do that. Why would you stop if it's working? Now, exactly. I don't, I don't know that either, si either side is going to have consistent success because I think both these defenses are good. Mm -hmm. But uh, hey, that's why they play the games. Uh, what to expect is brought to you by Brian Patton and Associates. It's all about the benefits. Matt, I've kind of uh, gone into the weeds on this the first couple weeks, and I'm going to do it again because I saw something in Justin Herbert last week. And again, assuming he's going to play, he, yeah, yeah. he was up from uh, did not work to limited today. But he likes to run the ball. He likes to scramble. Mm -hmm. He likes to either extend or just take off and go. But sometimes he starts to take off, and then he gets an idea in his head or he sees something, and he'll pull up right before he gets to the line of scrimmage and try to improv a pass. Somebody will break open. He'll try to play a little street ball. Um, two times he turned it over against Carolina doing that. Once he pulled, ah, yeah. once he pulled up and threw the ball and uh, threw it in a bad spot and it got picked, and another time he got crumpled and he fumbled and Carolina got it. Uh, I expect... Justin Herbert to turn the ball over at least once. Okay. Doing something like that. Okay. Uh, Especially not, against his front. And... Not necessarily dropping back and just, oh, I didn't see the safety or, oh, I sailed it or, oh, the cornerback jumped the route. Like a goofy turnover okay. on a goofy kind of play. And if Justin Fields stays as disciplined as he has and the Steelers don't turn it over as they have not, maybe that's the difference. But I, th oh. I think Pittsburgh's going to win takeaway giveaway uh, at least plus one. Okay. That's what I expect. Well, that almost always results in a Steeler win. I mean, the, the numbers are bonkers when they don't throw an interception. Yeah. When they even, even when they ben. right. I mean, even when they tie the turnover battle, the Steelers win. If they don't lose it, they're a really, really hard team to beat. And say what you want about Fields, they have not produced touchdowns with them, but that has changed drastically from his Bears days. I mean, he was negative plays, sacks, turnovers. Huge positive plays too, but he has not been that roller coaster, good or bad here. And I think there's something to do with the coaching staff. So you got an expectation? I think it's gonna be a really physical game. <laughs> I think special teams favors the Steelers, That's but not by a ton. Yeah, that really is. <laughs> we didn't talk a lot about J.K. Dobbins, but he scares me. I mean, okay. I, I think limiting explosive plays by him is extremely, extremely important. They're gonna do it. I think this defense is the best in the league. I really no do. Kidding. I really do. I'm not trying to like get people all excited. He just got you me know, excited. I think it's the best in the league, and I don't see a lot of weaknesses with it. I think the front is tremendous. The speed on the back end pays off in a big way. And I think Pickens has that breakout game that he's shown. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, it's not Sertain. It's not Terrell. Their corners no, are okay, not. but I think Pickens' eyeball test has been a lot better than his numbers. So I'm going to go with one uh, Justin Herbert turnover. You're going to go with George Pickens gets it done. Blowing up, yeah. Uh, what to Expect brought to you by Brian Pat and Associates. It's all about the benefits. Uh, you know, we talk about these defenses and how low scoring it's going to be. I mean, again, small sample size, but just consider this. The last time two teams met in week three or later – that were both allowing 10 or fewer points in a game was week four in 2006. Wow. That was Baltimore and San Diego. A little coincidental uh, ah, okay. matchup there. Wow, yeah, and, there's uh, some irony there. Ravens won the game 16 to 13. That's actually the score I'm picking for this game. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if people are wondering when is the Steelers' offense going to break out, and if you hear Arthur Smith uh, through Troy Utano, he told a bunch of us mm -hmm. yesterday, uh, Coach Arthur told us we're like a dam that's about to break. And, you know, some other guys have talked about that. And guys have referenced the first half in Denver and how close they were to really putting up some yeah, points yeah, yeah. there. Uh, I think it's not going to look like it's looked the first two weeks eventually, but I don't think Sunday's going to be the day. <laughs> yeah. I still think the Chargers' defense is 
good, not great. I mean, I understand that they have not. I don't think they've been challenged all that much. And the, th the two things I keep coming back to in this game, we talk about all the similarities. But of the four units, I think the Steelers' defense stands alone as the best of the four. No kidding. Offenses are about to push. Yeah, but they also have a quarterback. You know, yeah. uh, who they're but, treating like a game manager, right? But no, we'll and he's also got, got some injury issues. They got uh, they got single early in that game, and uh, he threw a twenty nine or thirty yard touchdown pass mm -hmm. uh, for a touchdown uh, to his wide receiver um, Quentin Johnston, mm -hmm. who was disappointing last year, very coming out of TCU, mm -hmm. and he's already he had two touchdowns against Carolina. He had two all last season. And uh, the word from the Chargers camp is it's the quote unquote new Q. Okay, it, Quentin Jones. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets it now. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh's pumped his tires. He's playing with confidence. Second time around a block in the NFL, he gets okay. it. That kind of thing. Uh, Herbert will take the occasional shot downfield, especially oh, yeah. if, if you give him single. But for the most part, I think they're going to try to bludgeon you. Oh, they 100% are. And Johnston has had two very good games, and he is a first round pick. But if Porter follows him like he did Sutton in London, I don't think we'll hear much from Johnston. I don't think yeah. he's nearly at the level of those two, especially London. Here's and, a crazy observation. All right. For Joey Porter in this game, is it more important that he tackle well than shut down the other team's best receiver? Their receivers are so light. If you could play 10 on 10 with Johnston and Porter just doing their own thing somewhere okay. else. I think that favors the Steelers dramatically as opposed but, to tackling and all that. You don't that think they'll tack the edge with Dobbins getting them outside? Yeah. Oh, they definitely will. I mean, they love to run outside behind those tackles with tight ends and Dobbins' speed. But that, that's, a gr that's a good point. I mean, he's going to have to tackle Dobbins in space, and, and that's dangerous. Terrell Edmonds, uh, the Steelers' defensive coordinator, was asked about that today. Has Porter improved his tackling? He said, absolutely. They, I don't see a, it as a problem right to me. But a point of emphasis, yeah. they've been working on it, and mm -hmm. it's way better than it was. Because we were talking last year at times, he ain't tackling anybody. No, and that goes back to Penn State because, yeah. like, his last nine or ten games at Penn State, they didn't even throw at him. I think the other guy, uh, Jackson, will be fine. Steelers corner Jackson? Yeah. I, I'm impressed. I think the secondary as a whole. Right, in terms of playing physical. And, oh, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Doing what he's he has smaller, to do in the run he, game. He'll stick his face in there, yeah. Yeah, um, I bet they challenge Beanie Bishop to tackle too. Yeah, run and, right at him, right? And uh, you know that's a guy that. Uh, well, the word coming out of West Virginia was, at least the word I got was, he was a better physical player than you would think, given his stature. Mm -hmm. uh, he's made some tackles. I haven't. I yeah, haven't, I haven't looked at him as a. a I don't think he's violent. been great, but that's if that's your weakest link of the defense. I think you're in pretty good shape. Anything like that? Um, just last thing I got tonight: uh, the second touchdown drive for the Chargers against Carolina. I think pretty typical for them. 11 plays, 65 yards, 6 minutes and 1 second. They ran it 9 times for 55 yards. They had one penalty on the defense for 5 yards. They were 1 for 2 passing for 5 yards. Now, they threw it in the end zone, but to uh, matriculate the ball down the field, as Hank Strand would mm -hmm. say, uh, 9 carries, and Dobbins, Gustavus Edwards, and Herbert all carried multiple times. Sounds like exactly what both these head coaches want to do. I mean, who can force the other team to play left-handed? That's yeah. the whole key. Here they come, and here we go. That's going to do it for the preview tonight. Uh, thanks to Merrill for joining us, as he always does, and uh, bringing the heat that uh, we count on him to bring. Thanks to Justin Miller for uh, keeping the board up and running and keeping us on the air. And uh, thank you for finding us, uh, however, and wherever you found us. We do this every week in advance of uh, the Steeler game. So uh, if you're new to the show, uh, we'd love to have you back. Uh, until next week, for Matt Williamson, I'm Mike Pursuta. You've been listening to Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Good night, everyone. We bleed black and gold. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. Grab your lucky spot on the couch because traditions make Sunday easy to enjoy. Bud Light, easy to Sunday, easy to enjoy. 
Bud Light is the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Enjoy responsibly. 21 plus, copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. It's time for Hot Routes with Pittsburgh International Airport, a proud partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fly, don't drive to see the Steelers play in Philadelphia this season and enter to win a VIP Steelers experience at any away game. Just enter your flight confirmation code from Frontier Airlines, New Pittsburgh to Philadelphia nonstop flight and be eligible to win a VIP Steelers experience, including flight, hotel, and Steelers. Steelers jerseys. Book now at flyfrontier.com and enter to win at steelers.com slash hot routes. All right, what's the best way to bank? At FNB, we think it's best left up to you. It's an approach we call clicks to bricks, and it means an unbeatable experience no matter how you bank. Whether you want friendly in-person guidance at your local branch, convenient access to video ATMs across the region, or a cutting-edge app on your phone, the choice is yours. Let's get started at fnb-online.com. FNB member FDIC. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Join host Rob King and black and gold legends Ernie Mills and Darren Perry in St. Pete Clearwater, Florida for a bye week at the beach getaway. The weekend includes black and gold themed get-togethers on the beach, autograph sessions, giveaways, and more. For more information on booking your package at the Tradewinds Resort on 